right where we left off. We're gonna get this master cylinder on here, but first I'm going to get the wheels off of it and I wanna disconnect all my new flexible hoses, my new flexible lines off of this thing before I go running the new uh, brake fluid through. I wanna flush out all of that old brake fluid first and I don't wanna run it through my new calipers. So I'm gonna disconnect all of those. So let's do the title intro and we'll hit it. You're watching On The Mark with Mark. I'm gonna blow compressed air down this port. This goes to the rear brakes and I've got two bottles hanging from my new brake lines back there. So I'm gonna blow air through here because I wanna clean out that old brake fluid that's in there. Well, that was kind of cool. Worked pretty good. Stuck this little hose in there. My catch bottle was still on the tube, but somehow it uh, it blew out quite a bit of it. So I got a bit of a mess on the floor here and on my tire. And now the front. The right side was a little more productive. As it turns out, that was not the brake fluid missing the bottle. Actually broke one of the hard lines, one of the original ones, when I was connecting the flexible line here. Let me bring you in closer and I'll show you what happened. The crack, the crack happened right about here crack happened right about here right about here just right about here and what happened is while i was turning not this one on but while i was taking the old one off this pushed back and was off of this bracket right here and there's a there's a brass block behind here and there's it's a hole, but it's got two flats on it. And while it was pushed back, those flats weren't there to keep this block from turning. And while I was loosening the original flexible line, this thing rotated about 90 degrees. Then when I went to put this one on, I was trying to figure out what was supposed to hold that while I was trying to tighten it. And then it dawned on me that those flats weren't engaged. So then I was able to pull this back, but I had to twist it back the 90 degrees to get it to go back in there. And probably twisting it back caused it wherever it kinked in here to open up. So this is where my leak is. So I need this line here that goes from this side. It travels all the way across to the other side. I need a new one of those lines. I could try to patch it right here, but kind of like the idea of getting a bunch of new lines in here. So I raised the Corvette up and we're going to put a new line on it. Here's the new brake line. It's stainless steel. I got it from uh, Zip Corvettes and uh, it's kind of beautiful here. Does it show up? Show up there. Made in America. Where does it go? It goes right here. 
Yeah, so I got to get the old one out of there first. So let's see how that goes. These are half inch. I hit this uh, a few days ago. I hit this a few days ago with some, uh, what is it, liquid wrench. Um, I hit them twice with liquid wrench. So I'm trying to decide if I want to replace these with some stainless steel hardware or what I'm going to do. Kind of a unique bolt there. It's got that thread cutting slot in it. There's three of these. Fortunately, I can't get on these other ones with this ratchet. Okay, now I just need to disconnect it from that brass block that's up there. So I'll need a brake line wrench for that. I have soaked this pretty good in liquid wrench again. Maybe I just cut that line and get on it with a socket. There we go. I'll get that out of the way. I should be able to get on that with a socket now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't understand that it is out of there. Just need to get the other side. Just for grins, I'm going to try loosening this side with the brake line wrench. All right, let's uh, let's resort to my newfound method. Here we go, we got it. There's what the original line looks like. Hmm, doesn't seem to be the same as my new one. All right, let's see how hard it is to fish this thing through. Now, does it go this way or does it go this way? Taking my new flexible line off. The reason this was turning is because it was missing this clip here that holds it into the flats on that bracket that's welded to the frame. But now, because I'm having so much trouble, I can't get either side started. And I'm afraid I'm gonna cross thread it because this is brass and it will cross thread easy. Now, maybe if it's completely loose, I can get it started. Yeah, I'm telling you, you got a hard line. You know, it can look completely straight and ought to go on, but it's not and it won't. Okay, so I don't have it completely tight yet, but come on now, you dog, uh, you can go in there. What are you doing? There it is, okay. 
and now I've got a clip for it. Yes, okay. Well, that made that line, that side easier. Now this ought to still go on fairly easy. <laughs> I think that's good and tight. Little German lingo there. Okay, I finally got that sucker on. And I put the pin back in. Now I just need to reattach and tighten the, uh, the flex line going to the trailing arm. Here we go, the moment of truth. way too easy the idea at this point is I want to flush this new brake fluid through the lines which I've already air purged and I want to see good new clear brake brake fluid come through to my hoses and once I have that then I'm going to connect the hoses to the calipers and then I can start with a proper bleed. Well, my method resulted in a heck of a mess. Here I had quite a bit leaked out right here because this was the closest one. Plus, I had some leakage while I was connecting the main lines from the master cylinder. This one really wasn't too bad despite how much was spilled. But this one fought me every inch of the way. It uh, It wouldn't thread in. I ended up having to disconnect the line at the back of the caliper and then get it attached at the trailing arm and then come back and attach it on the caliper but a lot of brake fluid uh, got spilled before that happened including all over my pants here and i was getting this blue paint all over me i think some of that it looks like green paint on the brake lines that I put in actually was getting dissolved because I was I was bending and rubbing on those things so hard. I figured out where the blue paint was coming from. It's coming off my screwdriver. But as far as I can tell, it, I, I wouldn't know if it was leaking now because I've sprayed things down with uh, brake cleaner and then I shot it all with some foaming gunk because I wanted to clean things off so things are dripping because of that and the the rear cylinder seems to be kind of leaking down but there's room in the calipers so the brake fluid may just be filling up the calipers um, I'll clean up the floor tonight and then uh, we'll have a look at it in the morning and see if all of this ended up draining out. I better order some more brake fluid. Dang it. I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's bubbles coming up right here. And they're going down. Now, no one's in there pumping the brakes or anything. So this is all happening by gravity. The bottle's got about a 
quarter of an inch in it now. This has been sending out bubbles for a good 20 minutes and I've got about a half a pint of brake fluid in my container now. So, you know, quite a bit has come through. So, oh, okay. All right, well, that was good. I just lost my siphon. Great. All right, I'm gonna go pump the brakes again. All right, did a lot of bubbles come out that time? Looked like it. I think a little bit of air is getting through right here. So I'm going to, I may come back to this one, but right now, the entire system, I mean, this is the furthest one, so any air all the way through the whole system is trying to come out right here. Now I've got another bleeder on the back side here on this wheelwood brake, so I'm going to, I'm gonna move to the far one, the one over here, which is the second furthest away from the master cylinder. And I'll crack it loose. All right, give it about a quarter turn. Okay, now we're on the other side of this caliper over here. So we're getting these two pistons over here. These two maybe have gotten all of it out, but we'll see what comes out of here. I'm gonna go pump the brakes again. Okay, I don't see anything. Did anything come out? If I only had one comment about gravity bleeding, it would be patience. There's bubbles coming out of there, but they're just drifting out slowly. Now I've gone and given the brake pedal five or six pumps a couple of times during this process. And I've got a full, I don't know if that's a pint of brake fluid through already. So I've moved quite a bit of fluid. I'm gonna give it another five pumps. While I'm doing my gravity bleed over here, I'm getting other things ready for the first start on this Corvette. And one thing I have is I still need to fill my differential. So I bought this. Hoping to see some pour out. There we go. Yeah, we're full. Perfect. Despite having the trickle charger on my old battery, it, uh, it didn't make it through this build. It was from 2016, so I guess that's eight years old. I guess they don't last that long. Anyway, here's the new one. And somehow this little bit of embossing right here for the positive and the negative 
even though this is a light colored battery and it gets in there behind my seat I can't see which one is which later if I'm hooking up a charger or something to it or or getting jumped so I like to color these in so that I can see it better and I also think I will write on here the date um, the manufacturer's dates on the side it's uh, 7 uh, 24 but I'm going to put down the install date of uh, what is today 20 first twenty twenty four you'll have to excuse my lettering there my hand had nothing to write on there so and I think I'll write install install There we go. Okay, so now next time I won't have to wonder too much about uh, how old the battery is because I won't be able to see this on the side. I'll be able to see that right on the top. Let's get this thing in there. I think we can we can actually start this thing for the first time. And I, I, I think it's been three years since I've started it. Since this engine hasn't ran in so long, I've mixed up a little bit of uh, two-stroke motor oil with some fresh gasoline, and I'm going to attempt to fill the float bowls here, which ought to be completely empty because it, it has been an honest three years, and uh, it was it's probably five years since it's really left the garage. So let's see how this goes here. Oh, what a mess. All right. So I thought that would go a lot better. I don't know how much. Yeah, probably flooded it there. Well, as, as Derek from Vice Grip Garage says, too much, perfect. All right, let's crank it and see what happens. Okay, here we go. a funny noise.
I think the smoke has cleared up pretty much now. It's gone down to the slow idle and it's got that nice uh, black, black, black sound going. Well, that's nice. Got a couple of new drifts of something down there. It's always something. Well, the brake bleeding is an ongoing process here. Um, the uh, gravity bleeding, if that's a viable option, I don't know how to do it. It's not working. It's just this continuous bubbles. I mean, I've watched it uh, on and off for 30 minutes and it just doesn't stop. Um, I, I did the fronts, but I, I tried doing kind of a hybrid method where I would push the pedal and have it blocked down and then I would close the beater, a bleeder and pulled it back up. Anyway, I think I need another guy out here and then uh, take another stab at it. Right now, my brake pedal just is mushy and goes all the way to the floor. So there, it has no brakes. So I don't wanna put the wheels back on it because I still need to bleed these brakes. But this is as far as I've got in the last two weeks, which is pretty dang good. I got the new battery in it. I got the uh, power steering pump tightened. I got the differential filled. Uh, I got all the brakes on. I got the master cylinder installed. I got all the brake lines hooked up. There are no leaks. What else is on my list here? Lube. Oh, my Z-bar spring had to get it attached for the clutch plate. And That's about it. So that's a lot. I thought I was going to get it out of the garage this time, but well, probably in the next uh, next couple weeks. I know I've got some other events coming up, so maybe not. But I was talking about starting it next time, and I got it started. So I'm going to call it a win. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, I mean, these last four or five videos have been all on the Corvette gear. So we're going to keep on going with that. I still have to get the hood on and then uh, I'm going to be shopping around for a paint job. So we'll see how that goes. I also want to put some new wheels and tires on this car, but that'll probably be after paint. So maybe next year. We'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching. Thanks for making it all the way to my to the end of my video and Thanks for subscribing if you decided to. Really do appreciate that. Thanks.